Well, this is how my morning is going. I just broke a drill bit. Yo. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Sierra, and if you haven't already guessed, in this video, I'm gonna take you along with me as I build my very own industrial juki machine. Just to give you all some backstory, this machine was purchased for me as a gift, but much to my dismay, it came unassembled. So I reached out to a local sewing machine repair place and asked them if they could assemble it and how much it would cost. I also specifically asked them if they could come to me and repair it since I had already had the boxes carried up three flights of stairs to my sewing studio. I just wanted to save time on bringing the boxes back down and I knew that it would probably be difficult to bring the machine back up once it's all assembled. Unfortunately, they let me know that they were not gonna be able to have any repairmen come to the property to assemble the machine. And so here I am attempting to build my own Juki industrial machine. If you are not already familiar with the term industrial machine, an industrial machine is the type of machine that is typically used in a factory or a production facility. They are more powerful and efficient than your average domestic sewing machine, aka home sewing machine. Prior to this, I used a domestic sewing machine, which was perfectly fine. However, I'm super excited to upgrade to the special treat of a machine. Birthday's here, birthday's here, birthday's here. I should also let you know that this machine doesn't come with any assembly instructions. It only comes with like a few images of what should be included in the box, but there's no instructions on how to actually assemble the machine. So love that for me, love that for us. I have found a video on how to build this machine by a Juki expert. This guy actually used to assemble my machines when I worked in the fashion industry. I will leave his information down below just in case you find yourself in a predicament like me and you want to build your own Juki machine. So here I have the table portion of the machine. This I actually already put together and I followed a YouTube video to figure that out. That wasn't too bad, but I just wanted to show you all the pieces that go with the machine. So this is the machine head, which is actually pretty heavy. This is the motor. This looks like the part that connects to the foot press. As well as this, where the knee goes. This looks like the part where the spool goes on top of the machine table. This is the side where you have that bobbin winder. And this is the pulley, some oil, and I think there's some other pieces in here, which I'm not really sure what they are for yet. I know this is like the side piece to like control the machine. Looks like I got my work cut out for me and uh, just pray for me guys. That's all I can ask. So I just placed the motor down onto the table and like I said, I am following a tutorial. Okay, so on the video it says next to place this box here and then put the screws on either side and he suggested to do it with a screwdriver instead of a drill so that you don't make it too tight. Um, so that's what I'm about to do. I have just installed the motor only to realize that this part, which I did like weeks ago, the foot pedal, this little thing right here, that's supposed to be on the other side. Oh. <gasps> So I have to flip this table for like the third time. And I really don't want to keep flipping it up and down. Because I don't think you should. Um, just so that I can unscrew that and screw it on the right side. Ugh. Yo. I got the motor installed onto the table. Only to realize when I, you know, need to put this next part, which is like the, I don't know what it's called. This thing. 
only to realize that I put the the foot pedal on backwards because this needs to go on there, but the way I have it currently is not the right way. So I have to flip this table once again for like the third or fourth time. And I really think you shouldn't be flipping these tables that often so that I can correct that part. Once I do that, then I'll be able to proceed with getting this thing on my bob on. So that's where I'm at. I'm just taking a little break real quick, trying to get myself together. And then we shall proceed. my morning is going i just broke a drill bit and so yeah that's fun but okay so here is what i have so far the machine head is on um right now i'm supposed to be drilling the holes here that will hold down the bobbin winder and then i can proceed to put like the guards on the side to cover up the belt but yeah i got one hole done so far and <laughs> The drill broke so i'm about to use the next size drill hopefully that'll you know be good um and then i can proceed i am installing the belt guard and double checking as i go along that the belt has enough room for clearance took me pretty much an hour to do something that probably should have only took 20 minutes but hey I'm no mechanic and this is my first time putting a machine together intense so on my tutorial that I've been watching the guy says the next step is to plug in this LED lamp if I could get it open the lamp is actually magnetic, so you should be able to stick it anywhere on the machine. There's a plug, and you can plug it in right here on the motor, and it says 110 volts. This is what that looks like. Okay, so I had the machine all set up. I survived, I got it done. Um, before I do the last step, which is put the oil into the bottom tray, I'm gonna try to figure out how I wanna position the machine. Do I want it against this wall or against my thread wall? Okay, so I decided to put it against this wall. Originally, I had it like the other way, against the other wall. But when I had it against the other wall, I was afraid that I might like turn around too fast and potentially bump into like this thread wall thing. So I decided to put this up against the thread wall and I think that's fine. This thread wall here actually comes out about this much. So the table is you know, almost lining up with that. I could probably still scooch the table over about an inch. So yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna plug it in. Well, no, first I'm gonna put the oil in, then I'm gonna plug it in and make sure everything works. And then I'll probably thread it up a little later. Cause at this point, I've been working on this thing for hours and you know, I'm just ready to take a break. But yeah, here it is, my Juki. DDL 8100E with a silent motor. 
Right now I'm pouring in the oil that comes with the machine. I would recommend only buying the oil that goes to their machine from their company. So I'm getting ready to fill this up. Inside the tank is a line that tells you low and high. So I'm gonna go in the middle. Here's what it looks like inside in case you were curious about it. It looks a little different than the one that I watched on the tutorial, but that model number is at 8,700. So anyway, yeah, that's what it looks like on the inside of an 8,100E. And as you can see, that's where I filled it up to the midway point between low and high. 